Hey guys, this is Rick and welcome to Walk and Talk 10. And today I thought I'd talk about some things that... Uh, oh, is that a cave or what is that? No. Okay. <laughs> nice little scenic overlook is what that is. Um, here, let's get up in the air here. I don't want to bounce around in that water. I want to go over here and look at these... Uh, rooftop forest. This looks kind of interesting. Is it just an island or what? This would be cool. So a little survivor island with a rooftop forest. Wow. It's probably not an island though, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, today I wanted to talk about some of the things that I'd like to see added in Minecraft. Now I've already talked about the scripting language and why why I think Minecraft needs a scripting language. The, the, command, the command blocks have their uses obviously but you know to do anything any sort of complex stuff using the command blocks it's just crazy and I mean you've seen you've seen the contraptions people have come up with on it and, and just the sheer number of command blocks and what does that cause it causes lag and difficulty and you know why not just why not just add a scripting language you won't have any of that to mess with so anyways but I've already talked about that but there are a few other things I'd like to see in vanilla Minecraft. Of course, you know, now all this stuff could be added uh, with mods. But I'm just talking about the vanilla Minecraft. And, and you know, because the problem with the mods right now is whenever they do an update, all the mods get broken. Every, all You know, and then what happens? You have to wait for them to get fixed. If they do get fixed, I mean... You know, I think the classic case here is, is Red Power. You know, that hasn't been updated because, well, it's just because it's, you know, you come out with a new version every six months. You know, it's just people don't have the time to do it. I mean, they're doing this in their spare time. They just don't have the time to do it. Yeah, that was it. This is an island, so it is like a little rooftop survival island. That's kind of cool. Uh, now, if the, when the mod API comes out, you know, when, if or when, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, I think I'm sure they're probably wanting, wanting to do it right, so they're taking their time on doing it, but uh, when the mod API comes out, if they implement the API correctly, then that should fix that problem of everything breaking, because when you have an API, what you do is you publish the interface to that API. That interface shouldn't change between versions. You may need to add new stuff to it. So what you do is you just add a new API command. You leave the old one in place and you add a new one to it. The underlying code can change. As long as the API interface doesn't change, you're good to go. And that's the whole reason why people use APIs in the first place. That way you can change the underlying code. But the interface, the published interface remains the same and it doesn't break uh, programs. And hopefully they... You know, that'll be the case when the when the mods come out. So, you know, when the mod API comes out and people start making mods to the API rather than to the source code, then, I, you know, we won't have this problem of mods continually breaking all the time, or at least we shouldn't, you know, if the mod API is implemented correctly and maintained correctly. And, and you know, the whole, whole concept behind API is once you publish that interface to the API, you cannot change it. It's called the interface contract. And once you do that, you can't change it. Because if you're changing it, then it's as if you're you're back to, you know, dealing with source code again, which is the problem we have now. And and you change the API, you're going to break, break everything. And uh, there's no reason to change the API. You would just add a new API if you need to do that, and add, if you're adding that new functionality. But you don't change the existing stuff. But what about some other things? Some other things I'd like to see added to vanilla Minecraft. Well... I think we're in desperate need of a reverse crafting or a deconstruction uh, block. You know, something that we can reverse craft with. We can, you know, based on, say, durability, you know, uh, depending on what the percentages of the durability, it would be like the crafting table, but reverse. And I know there's mods that do that. You know, so you take the crafting table and you reverse it. So you have the, you know, you put your item that you're going to be reverse crafting in the in the in what is now the output, 
and the output for this reverse crafting table would be the 3 by 3 grid and you know you get back get back a percentage of the contents based on the uh, durability of the of the item and uh, oh, talk about a little survival island here look at this guy <laughs> Oh, this has got two sheep to go with it, too. Or no, three sheep. Wow, that's funny. Four sheep. Wow, four sheep. Okay. Um, yeah, because, you know, we can, you know, in real life, not that Minecraft is real life, but I mean, in real life, you could take a, a door, for example, and, and tear it apart and take the door handle off and, you know, get stuff out of it. You know, so, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to take a door and put it in the reverse crafting and get the wood back from it, you know, uh, you know, or, or a diamond, you know, horse armor and put that in there and get back some diamonds from it. Not that, there, you know, of course, there's no crafting recipe for, for horse armor. So, you know, I don't know how that would be implemented. I, I guess stuff that doesn't have a crafting recipe, you couldn't use in there because there are obviously no recipe to, to go against. Um, which I think is, I think I've mentioned before, the, the horse armor needs to be, the saddle and the horse armor, all that stuff needs to be craftable. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, especially the saddles because, you know, it was craftable when they very first came out as, uh, Dilgit, uh, mentioned to me once before, but then they changed it. <clears throat> so, but I, but that needs to be a craftable item. And, and the reason for, uh-oh, getting severe lag here. There we go. Must be generating new territory, new terrain. Whoa, real laggy. That was a huge lag spike. Um, you know, my, my idea is that the saddle is a necessary... It's not an optional item. It's not like uh, Mossy Cobble. You have to have a saddle in order to control a horse. You know, and without that, the horse is useless. And to make that a rare item find is ridiculous. It needs to be a craftable item that you can make in the game because it's a necessary item. It's like a pickaxe, you know. If you can't make a pickaxe, you know, imagine if a pickaxe was uh, a rare item drop. You know, that's ridiculous. You, you couldn't play the game that way. And, and it's the same with horses. It's, you know, you could argue that saddles are... Uh, saddles are common you know or easy to get when you, if you go to the nether or you know dungeons or whatever but that's kind of beside the point the point is this is a necessary item that you need in order to play the game it's not an optional item it's not mossy cobblestone you know they added a crafting recipe for mossy cobblestone which is you know useless really but they don't have a recipe for a saddle which is necessary in order to control the horses uh, that's just you know that's one of my pet peeves is you know you can't make a necessary game item you know a rare rare item like that it's just you know it's not fair to the player to do that sort of thing so we should at least be able to make saddles you know horse armor okay well you could debate that I guess but you know saddles we need to be able to make those uh, another thing I think we sh that I would love to see in the game is uh, some sort of craftable mini map and specifically something that you could set waypoints are it is so easy to get lost in this game and it's just you know you've got the f3 already and that gives you your coordinates so it's not like adding a waypoint that displays on the screen is something all that much more than what's already in the game and to make it a craftable item I mean we've already got maps in there so it'd be nice to be able to or even if even if we have these maps, be able to uh, set waypoints. But I, you know, I like the uh, REI's mini map version where you know you've got a like a you know like a nameplate that you can see and head towards, and you can turn them off and on. That's you know I think that that's something that needs to be in the game. That would, that's not one of the one of the things that's going to uh, you know make the game too easy to play or you know whatever it's just it's just a convenience really more than anything you know especially when you're doing videos you know I mean that is extremely annoying <laughs> it's annoying to me and it's annoying to you so you know that's uh, it would be nice to have that 
you know, so a little mini map type thing in there would be super to have. So the reverse, you know, be able to craft saddles, uh, reverse crafting, uh, mini map. That would be having those items, I think, would be nice. The last item, I, I think, really not the last item. I have a bunch of ideas I, I think need to be a bunch of things I think would help the gameplay a lot. But these are sort of my main main ones. The uh, this is a pretty little area here. I like this a lot. Um, the other thing is a bro block breaker. Now we've already got hoppers that transport items. Um, we've already got this automation system near automation system in place. So the next logical step is to add a block breaker because I mean it's it's the next logical step in, in the automation. You know, the, the automation that they've already implemented in the game. It's not like this is something new. They've already got the hoppers in there and the hoppers suck items and put them into chests or put them into uh, furnaces or, you know. So why not make a block breaker that you could uh, activate with redstone and when it's activated, it breaks the block in front of it. You know, if there's a block there, it breaks it and shoots it out of the back into an inventory. You know, so it could shoot in the back to, say, a uh, hopper. And then that, that hopper could, you know, pick it up and shove it into a uh, chest or whatever. So, you know, I mean, especially on super flat worlds, gosh, that would be so handy. You could set up an automatic uh, uh, cobblestone generator and get tons of cobblestone that way. You know, set it up in a clock, you know, use a hopper timer and activate the thing and boom 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 there you go you know but it'd be it'd be nice for other things as well making a farm for example uh trees you know chopping down trees you could have a, a whole row of them so when a tree grows up to a certain height it just you know breaks all the trees so automatic tree farm i mean we have all we have most of the components of all that stuff already in place so adding a block breaker i don't think is is anything beyond the pale of of you know i don't think it's an op addition at all it's just the next logical step in in the automation that they've already implemented in the game so that's the other thing i like to see i think that would be very helpful a block breaker uh, you know just a simple redstone activated block breaker and if there's a block in front of it it breaks it and sucks it shoots it out the back into whatever you know if there's nothing there she throws it on the ground but you know you can put a hopper behind it or a chest behind it or whatever you know and uh, there you go so just some Things I like to see added to the game uh, in vanilla. Uh, but, you know, what I'm really looking forward to, though, is the mod API and that getting squared away. Once that gets squared away, we're not going to have all this problem with all these mods breaking all the time. And we'll be able to customize Minecraft and, you know, all the stuff that they don't want to add. Well, we'll just find a mod and we'll add it ourselves. And, uh, you know, or make the mod and, <laughs> you know, someone will make the mod and we can use it and, and customize the game. That's one thing nice about Minecraft is it is, you know, Mojang has allowed the game to be customizable and uh, modded. And, you know, uh, uh, they can't do everything. You know, as a programmer, you just can't implement everything. Uh, but, uh, you know, once the mod API gets in place, we'll be able to customize this game and make it the way we want to make it. Uh, but those few items in vanilla would be nice to have until, you know, until the mod API rolls around because uh, I, I haven't heard of anything as far as a expect, expectation date on, on when that's going to come around. And it's a big job, you know, designing an API is not trivial by any means. So, you know, they're, I think they're wanting to do it right. And they're taking their time. And that's the, that's the right, correct decision. It needs to be done right because there's nothing worse than a bad API. Believe me, I've had to deal with them, you know, and it's just terrible. And it's, it's useless. It ends up being useless in the end. So so there we are. Uh, walk and talk. Kind of a, just a little wish list of mine for Minecraft. So appreciate you all watching. And I will talk to you again next time. Goodbye.